everybody. Um, I am coming to you from a totally different location, <laughs> which is bizarre in and of itself. Um, I've got my uh, best boy here. Yeah. Is that what it's called in the business? Sure, key grip. <laughs> my <Best> key grip. <laughs> um, we had to relocate for um, some family situation. So I'm coming to you. It looks like a hostage situation, but really I'm in a basement. And, um, and because, you know, boomers are hoarders, we found random things in the basement <laughs> to, to uh, you know, create a bizarre ambiance, which uh, could change weekly. So we'll see. Um, thank you. Um, so if you are just joining us, tell us in the comments where you're joining from. Um, we have Adriana. Hello, Fiona. Hi. Hi. Um, where are you guys joining us from? What part of the world? What part of the of the world are you coming in from? Rachel Leah Cohen. Hey, um, you, Rachel, you like the, <laughs> the situation here? I even put my uh, Delcy luggage. This is the uh, carry on size. And uh, I've got this right here awkwardly positioned on a random column that used to be part. I don't even know what the theme was when this was used as decor, but you never know what you're going to find in a boomer basement. So anyway, uh, Rachel's coming from the 818. Adriana, you're coming in from Florida. Amazing. Netherlands. Hey, welcome, Isabel. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we are back this week. It's a bizarre setup. So just you know, bear with me. But what are we talking about this week? This week, it's about should you travel in 2022? Um, and here's what you need to know. So I know so many of you that follow me, you love travel, you love cultural experiences, and you know how life changing it is like really, truly. And like, for me, it's, I don't think I could live without it. But we've had to. And that's okay. We make sacrifices sometimes for the greater good. But as we're moving forward, should we do it in 2022? Um, I'm going to share with you how I traveled in 2021 to five European countries, and I even ran two cultural immersion tours. Nobody got sick. Uh, nobody was quarantined. Nobody was stuck anywhere. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's dive into it. Oh, before I forget, um, and you know I like to have something for you, something super fun. So from last month, uh, the last live of the year and today um i'm gonna pick a winner at the end of the show and you're gonna get my one of my favorite pieces of travel gear which is the foldable day pack i don't have it with me to show you but i think some of you've seen it it's um you just fold it up into like a little um small square it fits so easily in your luggage and then as you go out for the day you can put your sunscreen your water your camera whatever you need or if you just buy a lot of souvenirs you can pack that and bring it as an extra piece of luggage so i'm going to give that away at the end how do you win it i'm going to tell you you put the word nuggets in the comments and then you will as you hear something that resonates with you right and then put what put whatever pearl of wisdom i have just dropped after that so we can all see what is kind of sticking with you and also share these things so that's how at the end i will go through everyone who commented nuggets with the with the information from the last time and today and pick a winner and then i will send it to you um if you are joining me on youtube live or even on my personal page hello welcome i can't see your comments so um you will have to come over to my business page which is in, uh, right here, you should be able to see that. Just come on over, and that way you'll be eligible to win too. So if you um, did not get your notes yet for the last show of the year, that's because I didn't do them, um, And but I'm going to. It's almost ready to go. So make sure if you want the last one, which was how travel can help you reach your New Year's goals, if you want that, make sure you put uh, love it in the comments and that way i know it's the previous one that you want if you want today's show notes about how to travel during covid put in the in all capital letters notes in the comments that and even if you're watching on the replay it's excellent i will keep going back and i will personally send you the notes so that you kind of have a checklist you kind of have something to um go through when you're thinking about travel for 2022 and beyond during this crazy time um who is thinking about travel? If you are, hit the love it, hit the heart button. Who's thinking about travel right now? I think about it all the time. Um, so, Seamus just put a dog down here. 
<laughs> it's like I'm in a dark basement and there's like, I can hear tippy, 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 but I can't see anything. So it's like, maybe there's rats down here, but I think they are my very own dogs. Um, so if I find one, I'll bring them up, but I think they're going to get lost and then fall under a pile of boxes, of boomer boxes. Anyway, uh, back to the chat so I can see you all. Hey, Stephanie, uh, boomer basement. Oh God, <laughs> Tammy. Excellent. Uh, yes, Tammy, I love this. Nobody got sick on your, and Tammy was with me. She knows firsthand. Um, Kay notes, I got everybody notes, love it. Um, and Jordan, she was a previous winner. You got it. Yay, Poland. I love it. Yes. And if you want to go to Poland, just come with me. You don't have to do anything because I've already done it. You just show up. Um, okay. Now, who am I? Thank you for joining me. A lot of you do know, but if this is your first time, I'm Juliana Dever. I'm a an experiential travel expert, and I create off the beaten path adventures for awesome, fun people who enjoy connecting with other cultures and supporting women owned businesses and traveling somewhere that is a little less obvious. And today we are going to talk about should you travel during 2022? So with the, I know one of the things too is these constantly changing rules, requirements, there's border closures, there's a lot of things that, because look, travel causes anxiety. Even someone like me who travels 100,000 miles a year, travel causes me anxiety. It just does, it's an unknown. And, and I hate flying as a lot of you know. So just thinking about being on a plane, I'm already so anxious, I'm too Xanax in, right? But it's not, if it's something that you're concerned about, because of health and safety or um, you know, losing any part of your investment. I, I wanna talk about this and I, and I wanna make sure that you understand that if you've lost a loved one due to COVID, I've lost a family member, I think everyone I know has, I'm in no way um, trying to minimize it or dismiss it. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm extending my condolences to you as well. This has been a tough time for all of us. But the reason that I wanna talk about travel, even though we're not, 100% past it is that it's something that we we need to think about how do we move forward because travel is something that helps your mental health it's something that we as humans are programmed to connect to be together so how do we do this fulfill these needs to be together as people to explore but also i want to remind you that um with it, in 2020 alone 100 million people lost their jobs because they were involved in in different, um, they were in the travel industry, and whether that was hotels, whether that was restaurants, maybe it was their lifelong dream to open up a an art gallery or a local jewelry store without foot traffic, without people, they had to close their shops. They maybe they ran tour companies. So how do we get into this next step where we're able to bring income back to men and women who have businesses affected by travel and who are in dire need of support and, and income to keep their families fed and clothed and warm? So how do we how do we what's our mindset for this year? I think there's three main hesitancies and I and I feel you. And please, please, please bring put any of it into the comments because I want to talk to you about it. Um, can't wait for Poland. I know, Carol, I'm so excited. Um, so, oh, look at Jordan. I love Jordan. I really do. <laughs> and Tammy, yes, this is an, I love this comment. I do support women owned businesses on my tours. You'll be amazed, like the incredible women that you will meet on, on each tour and the small businesses that they have created and the connections and connection is incredible. Um, but let, let's, Get back on track. I'm sorry. I love talking to you guys so much. Um, travel absolutely helps your mental health. Absolutely. Um, what are the three main hesitancy points? And I, I think that's the health and safety of yourself and others. That's 100% valid. Um, loss of income and also the regulations. So let's start with the first one, which is health and safety of others that you come in contact. Um, you know, COVID has been unpredictable, right? And in 2020, I wouldn't even recommend that you travel. Um, I canceled all of my tours. And even in 2021, I had to cancel Georgia because vaccine inequity is real. And in that country, only 5% of the people had access to vac vaccines. And we go into locals' homes, and I in no way want to jeopardize anybody at any time. So I'm always thinking about how do I keep people safe when we travel? And how do I keep 
the people that we visit safe. So that's number one. Um, but again, I want to talk about the balance that we need to bring back to our lives. Um, so 2021, I traveled to five European countries, ran two tours. Um, what were the the benefits of traveling in 2021? Well, you know, historically, we also have seen that even in the thick of it, the um, the cases were much lower in the summer. So that's one thing to think about. Um, according to, and I, and I also did a little bit of research because I always want to bring you facts, um, but you know, according to epidemiologists, COVID's not going anywhere, unfortunately. Um, it might be, you know, like a flu or a cold in the future where we're all gonna have to deal with it. And we're gonna think about, you know, what are the risks? And so I'm always weighing that as well. But do we plan trips? I have a calculated yes, absolutely. That's what I'm going to say. So how do we plan safely? Um, choose your destinations with safety factors in mind. And um, are the hotels that you're going to be staying at, is the transportation that you are going to be on, um, are, there, are they choosing to follow strict guidelines to keep people safe? And this is all stuff that you can look up from the comfort and safety of your own home. Um, in fact, Rachel, I don't know if you're still here. Hello, Mary Lou. Um, sorry, I've got my, I don't know. Um, but you know, there's also things that you adjust on the fly. Like Rachel and I were in Croatia this past summer. We were in Plitvica Park and um, it's a beautiful park with waterfalls. It's all outdoors. So it's one of the reasons uh, we chose to make that one of the places that we visit. But at one point you have to take an enclosed um, tram bus and take it from one part of the park to the other. We got on and then other people, yeah, Rachel, you're here. So you know totally about this, the people on the bus, right? We got on and people started filling in around us and it was, they were too close and they were not wearing masks. And both of us were like, oh no, it's not happening. And we both, as the as it was about to go, we jumped off the bus and we raced to the another car because they're all kind of connected and we jumped on when there was no one in it. And and, then, and even the park attendants were yelling at us, you can't jump off the bus. And Rachel, who's very vocal, <laughs> she's like, no one's wearing masks. But the point of that is, speak up, it's okay. You know, we, we knew that after that, we were going to see all of my guests, half of whom are already here, that I'm not gonna get them sick. I'm not gonna get anybody sick. You just don't know, right? So, you know, think about the safety in mind when you choose your destinations and adjust on the fly. Um, if you're booking a uh, a small tour, is it or a, a tour? Is the group small? Um, there's a, a a very popular travel company. I'm not going to name any names, but it's funny because the the one of the things they say is a small group tour, and there are um, what is it? It's like almost thirty people. Thirty people. That is not a small group to me. And and the reply to that is, oh well, you know, other tours are sixty people, which I'm just like, oh my god, if you're on a cruise ship. But you know, look for if you're going to go with the group, make sure that it's a small group. Make sure that they have COVID guidelines that are published on their site or that you can find out readily. Um, and make sure that they, you know, that they have the protocols speak to them if that is you know if you really want to know more and um have they made look at the itinerary are there arrangements for things to be moved outside um for me i'm really lucky like slovenia has incredible weather and we eat every single meal outside um so just look at the policies and make sure that you feel protected and then you feel safe and also if you have any questions at all please put them in the chat so we can talk about it while i'm here um Rachel says, let's see, can we get that all on there? Part of the reason I traveled with you is because I know you're as COVID conscious as I am, and I felt more comfortable knowing that you're aligned in our thinking with safety. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I believe in travel, and I believe it is so vital, but it has to be done safely. And it has to be done with consideration for the places that you're going to. These aren't your playgrounds. We're connecting with other cultures, and those people have day-to-day -day lives that we want to contribute to. We want everyone to be safe and happy and we want to connect and learn. So let's, you know, let's do things, you know, uh, mindfully. So I also want to talk about when you book your flights. And this is something I forget um, that people don't always know about or think about. But first of all, book 
do a little bit of research and book with a reputable airline, a well-established airline, and then really look at their policies. So many airlines at this point, they you can change your ticket with no fees. So there's no change fees whatsoever. You can just move to another and that to move to another flight, which is great because in the past, like even United, it was two hundred, three hundred dollars to make that change. They've they've taken that away. So that's one way you can protect your investment and minimize the loss of money. Um, also, and then I think I looked at I looked at United today. I also looked at Lufthansa, and they're also making sure that you are able to change your flights. You might also look into getting a refundable flight. Sometimes those are cost prohibitive, and if you know you're going to fly again, making the change is probably better. But some are still offering refunds, so look into it. I know last year uh, I had booked a flight to Tbilisi, Georgia, and when I realized it wasn't going to happen, I was I booked on Turkish and they gave me my money back less a little bit, but it was worth it. So um, another thing, this is super important. Listen to me now and hear me later. Do not book on a third party site for your airline tickets. That means like the Orbitzes and the Expedias. And, and I understand the temptation. The prices look great, but it is a third party site. So you have no protection. If you need to make a change, if you need to try to get a refund, when you book through third party sites, 95% of the time, there's no recourse. You're done. That even goes for hotels. So I would be uber, uber careful about booking on a third party site because I don't want you to lose any investment in your airfare. That that those few bit of dollars that you might save, you will lose if you need to make a change. And of course, right now the key is flexibility. I, I mean, I can sit here and say, let's all travel in 2022. Some crazy variant comes up, we have to readjust. That's just the way that's the world we live in right now. Um, for hotels, you know, book direct, always try to book direct with hotels because actually third party sites take like 30%. And that's terrible for these hoteliers that are trying to stay afloat. But they'll often give you excellent rates, if not better than a third party site. Plus, again, you have the flexibility. When you do that, look for refundable rates. They don't, sometimes they cost a little bit more, but again, it's worth it because if you need to cancel at the last minute, no problem. If you are booking on a third party site, I do use booking.com sometimes. And I have to say they've, for the most part, it's been pretty good if I can cancel, you know, whatever it is. Sometimes it's 24 hours before. Then I'm totally, I'm covered. Um, I, I also have been burnt a couple times by booking through booking.com. And then I actually went to a hotel and I hated it. And I was like, I'm out, I need to go. And they were like, fine, we're keeping all of your money because you didn't book directly through us. Sometimes you bite the bullet. It's just the way it is. But I just want you to have that information so you know, as long as you know you're going to cancel before you get there, booking.com for me, I know is one of the few that is, um, that does get your, give you your money or it doesn't, they just don't charge you. Um, and also the same with tours. If you're booking a tour, make sure you understand the, the, um, the refund policy, the change fees on my tours, there's no change fee if you wind up not going, if, as long as it's a certain time. So make sure you understand all of it so that you protect your investment. Um, let's see what everybody else is saying. Um, small groups are key, connecting with other cultures. Yes, Hale, it's it's everything. Research airline policies for, for booking this. Um, <laughs> Jordan, um, don't book through third party sites. I'm telling you guys, just if you remember one thing that I've told you today, just save yourself. Um, yep, Brianne, you had that happen to you. Um, so fourth is, you know, the high, the health protocols. So when you're traveling, this is incumbent upon you, but you'll also find that where you go, this is something that will be mandatory. Because when you go to other countries, when you travel internationally, you need to follow the rules of that country. Their house, their rules. If you don't like it, don't go. Um, but um, almost every country requires either uh, vaccinations, boosters, negative COVID tests, wear masks, uh, social distancing, appropriate hygiene, you know, keep your hands clean. So even if they don't, these things are still incumbent upon you to protect your own health and other people. And, um, you know, we were in a bit of a bubble on my trips to Slovenia last year, my two groups. And so everybody was already vaccinated before they showed up, but they also, 
when we took over a whole, a whole hotel, which we did sometimes because it was, you know, we would go to small local places that only had like nine rooms. Um, you know, we still were safe because we were the same bubble. But if we were in a hotel where there were people and we didn't know, we just had no idea if they were healthy or not, we wore masks. We made sure our hands were washed. You know, these are things that you personally can do to keep yourself safe when you travel because you don't want to test negative and be stuck somewhere or test positive, you know, you know, like, and then you want to go home and then you can't. So make sure that you're following the, you know, all the rules that you've already, I feel like we've internalized them at this point. So, you know, follow them and be respectful. Um, and now the fifth one about how to travel during 2022 is I know something that makes a lot of people nervous and that's all of the changing regulations. Um, how do you find out about them? How do you even find out find out about them? I'm going to talk about it, but I also want you to know that you. This is hard for a lot of people. It's hard for me sometimes, but you have to. And uh, Jane, uh, one of my guests, who goes on all of my tours, I love. She once said, "You just have to be Gumby. You just have to be flexible, because sometimes things change while you're there." And that, hundred percent. If that makes you uncomfortable, maybe you know wait another year. But if you're like, I need to travel, then this is something that you have to kind of, you know, get a little used to. And here's, here's a, a big example. And that was when I was in, so I went to Portugal in June and it was right when the borders opened up and things in Europe were a little just fluid. And while I was there randomly, and I would hope that, and I think this probably won't happen again, but it's what I encountered was that Lufthansa just woke up one morning and decided, oh, hey, I don't, uh, I, I, we're not going to fly anyone who's in Portugal. We're just not going to fly them. Forget all the internal squabbles because that made the Portuguese probably justifiably upset because um, <clears throat> they have better vaccination rates, but Germany, I digress. I had a flight in two days and I couldn't get to where I needed to go because Germany's Lufthansa kind of has a lot of routes. You need to be flexible. What did I do? Again, this is probably not what everybody would do. I fortunately have a lot of friends around the world and or in a lot of these countries. I had to go to Croatia. I found a nonstop flight from Lisbon to Croatia and then I hired a driver to drive me across the border into Slovenia. And the thing, and this is something you have to look out for, and I know, I know that there's a lot of regulations. The benefits of traveling during this time are big, but these are the little thorns, right? Um, I had to show proof of tourism, meaning I had to show up and have proof that I was spending at least one night in a hotel in Croatia. So I spent one night in a hotel in Croatia. Of course, no one asked me for this proof. And that's the other thing. And I'm not advising you to not follow the requirements, but I would say nine times out of 10, it was like, oh, we're going to check this. We're going to check this. We're going to check your entry form. And it's like breezed around. I was like, does anyone want to see my vaccine card? It can be maddening because you're trying to follow the rules. But let's talk about them for a minute. And let me make sure. Um, have good travel insurance. Yeah, Fiona, absolutely. Um, it's uh it's definitely something that you want to look into and that there's intricacies on travel insurance that's a whole other show but absolutely be flexible love how you're so transparent juliana oh thank you carol yeah i uh i mean i don't know how else to do this because i want to share with you guys so when you're in situations you also can go oh what would juliana do sorry. <laughs> um, so let's talk about, um, you know, being flexible. How do you kind of get um, your head around the rules? And, and really, like, for most, the, the easiest thing, and let's see if I have, did I put any of those? I did not put up any of the, um, I can put the links up, but l let me share with you that the first thing that I do is I Google uh, entry rules for whatever country I'm going to. So that's my first, that's where, that's my end point. And, um, and the first website that I look at is the, uh, the U S embassy. And that's usually the two letter code of the country. So like for Portugal, it's pt.usembassy.gov. And then it's, you don't have to write this URL cause you'll see it, but you'll see the U S embassy.gov 
slash COVID-19 information. And it gets pretty detailed. I mean, it'll tell you, can you use an antigen test? Can you just have to be a PCR test? Does it, do you need a passenger entry form, like a passenger locator form? And you kind of, you'll, you'll get that little list. It's generally, there's, there are hoops to jump through, which can be frustrating, but the hoops are usually you need to show a negative PCR test, a negative rapid antigen test, two different types of tests. Not You don't need both one or the other. Um, antigen test is becoming far more prevalent. You need a passenger entry form. And uh, if you have proof of vaccine, those are usually the things that, that they require. Um, and a lot of the time the airline will ha handle this prior to you boarding. Um, I know a lot of times, um, only twice I think I had customs and immigration ask for any of the required paperwork. And it's they have different qualifications for every country. So be patient, be nice to your airline uh, gate agents. They're doing their best, um, but they will look for those things. And here's a big tip. If you are um, laying over, this is, I don't know my symbol for laying over. If you're going on a layover somewhere internationally, I want you to remember to be prepared that you will have to show your paperwork more than once. And so always have it available, but also as much fun as it is to maybe go to the lounge or sit and have a beer or go through the gift shop, just don't do it unless you have like eight hours <laughs> because more than once I've had it happen in, I think I had it, I connect, I left Los Angeles and I want to say I connected, let's say in Houston and then going to Germany and then to Portugal. And when I got to Houston, they, I went to the lounge and just chilled and then I would, my normal time to go to the gate. No, there was an hour long line for the gate agents in Houston to check my vaccination card, my passenger entry form. I was so upset the first time because I was like, you checked it all in Los Angeles. Why are we doing this again? But that was the flight that was going into Europe and they needed to. And once I kind of understood it and I admit I was a little bit stressed at flying, but I want you to know this ahead of time. So you're equipped just go because you could be facing an hour long line in Munich. They, and the Germans are very organized and yet they still had lines that were an hour deep. So make sure you just get to the next gate and then you can relax. But I want to, I want you not to have to go through what I went through. Um, and so um, what else did I want to tell you about them? Like look for the, if you're returning home, this is the other big thing. And you need to think about this before you leave. Um, I think we have a lot of um, US citizens here, but whatever country, whether you're in the UK, Canada, wherever, before you leave, make sure you also know the email, at, or not the email address, the um, website of whatever the governing party that handles the requirements for re-entry. So make sure before you leave that you know you can get back home, that you know you'll be allowed back into your home country. For U.S. citizens, since 2021, it's been fairly simple. Um, the requirement is just a rapid antigen test. And what I love about that is that um, Binax now, I think I've posted about it before. I'm happy to put the link in again. But if you, you can get tests that are connected with telehealth, meaning before you leave to get on your, to go on your departure flight, you sit down on your computer, you connect with a nurse, you do the test, they verify the results, they give you a QR code and you show that to the airline. So you don't have to faff about trying to find a PCR test in the country um, that you are still enjoying your time in. Instead of getting a gelato, you're racing around looking for a test. Um, so that's one way to, kind of, you know, maximize your time there. Now that can change and you may need to get a PCR test depending on where you're going. It could be quite easy. There's a lot of countries where there was, there were COVID free COVID testing, like every block, but I want to save you some time. And if that is a possibility where you are, bring those with you and then you can get back in to your home country easily. Um, what else? Let me make sure. Do I have any other questions? Um, there's a lot of everybody visiting. I love it. Um, let's see. What is this? Do you have any tips for finding good business class fares? <laughs> I don't know if that's a whole other show, Tammy. Um, you know what I do is 
try to book ahead of time as much as possible. I will tell you that I read somewhere that um, airfare right now for summer is still extremely good. I've bought first class tickets, just straight out bought them for maybe two or three hundred dollars more. That's it than an economy ticket if I did it in enough time. A lot of times I'll use my miles, but um, I know. Um, Oh, let's see. And then Tammy also. Yes, you use them on our tour, Tammy. Um, so if anybody else has any other tips about uh, I know there's a whole there's a whole website that talks about it. It's really depending on the on the airline. It's not easy. Um, it's I think Austrian is actually easy because you can bid. And I know um, that some of our guests from Austria are from Slovenia last year. They bid on it. But um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. I would love to do business class more often. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kristen, uh, she's replying to Tammy. I agree. Like, I don't really have jet lag when I show up if I've been able to sleep on the flight. Um, so um, any other questions? Um, yeah. So if you, and also if you're a U.S. citizen, um, Google and for anyone, Google entry rules for returning to put your country. Um, you will get your governing body that will give you that information um, for the United States is the U.S. Department of State. Um, and they'll also refer you to the CDC, which has it. And there's a website. It's a very clear website. It's like CDC entry rules for international travel. So you can find out ahead of time what's expected of you upon your return. And I recommend you do that before you leave. Um, just don't forget, I see there's a, a lot of nuggets. I love it. I'm going to be picking a winner soon so if you have any other nuggets you want to throw in now's your time um so it was amazing to see everybody hi pia um what's the craziest thing you've done in a country for fun okay that's a topic for another show uh but i can it also sounds like a rachel leah cohen question <laughs> rachel knows what i mean maybe rachel and i'll do that because uh we have traveled all over the world together <laughs> and done some funny things. Um, make sure you calculate your 72 hours or uh, this is from Jenny. Let me um, put this up here so you can all see it. Make sure you calculate your 72 hours or whatever you need for tests with the proper time changes factored in. Yes. And Jenny, I will also say don't do it at 72 hours because what happened to me at one point was like, oh, I'll do it now and then get it over with. And then um, the flight got delayed. And then also, even, even so, once I got to Germany and I had to take my next flight from Germany to Portugal, the German gate agent was like, this is already expired. And I'm like, well, I've been flying. What was I supposed to do? So keep in mind when you're taking your COVID test that if you can get it a little bit more inside that window, that will give you that, um, a result, a COVID result, test result that will be valid throughout your journey because you don't want to be halfway on your journey and some some gate agent who wants to be a super stickler about the rules is like, well, this is invalid. Um, they still let us on because I tried to use some logic, but just keep that in mind that these things can happen as well. Um, but yeah, it's a tricky wicket, right? Because if it's a PCR test, you need to have so many, you might need a window to get the result. Um, so far, the countries that I've personally traveled to in 2021 were all okay with the rapid antigen test, which I took at home. So, and sometimes, as was the case um, in August of last year, they got slammed and it was like five hours until they could get to you, which I was like, oh, so don't do it right before you leave for the airport because then you might get screwed that way as well. So give yourself the time. But yeah, I know that's it can be anxiety reducing, inducing. I feel you. I feel you. But if you can wade through these things, then once you get there and you're all just relaxing and eating amazing food and seeing beautiful mountains or whatever your wherever your trip takes you, it's worth it. Um, OK, what did we go over today? Besides just getting to talk to each other again, which I absolutely love. Um, we talked about why, if you meet the country requirements and you're comfortable with it, 2022 is a good year to travel and why we need it. We need it for our mental health. We need it because of our, just our, we're programmed in our DNA to connect as humans. And we, the longer we're apart, 
I don't know. I think it's personally dangerous. It's empathy, compassion. I know I'm, I'm expounding, but we need to connect. We need to connect with ourselves, each other. So this is what travel does. And this is why it's so magical. And also we need to think about helping to support and build back the travel industry and all the local families who own businesses that, that they were able to provide because they had a business that you came in and supported. We need to be able to help everybody get back on their feet. So as long as we're safe, this is hugely important. We also talked about the biggest challenges to travel and how to navigate them. And that's the health and safety of yourself and others that you come into contact with. It's how to minimize your travel investments, your the money that you put into it, how to minimize that loss. And also, dealing with the ever-changing rules, the regulations, and just coping with those requirements because it's another layer of anxiety. And I don't want you to be anxious. I want you to be so happy when you travel. So this is why I wanted to talk to you about it so we could kind of go through it. Um, hi, Shirley. Hi. So um, is it time? Is it time for the backpack giveaway? I think it is. I think it is. Okay. Everyone that wrote Nugget, um, and let me see, and I've got everybody from the last, I've got everybody in a spreadsheet. Okay, and whoever wins my random scroll is going to, I'm going to send you a backpack. Okay, hold on. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Stop. Tammy! Tammy Todd Johns, I am sending you a packable day pack, which I think you might already have, but you can always use another. All right. Amazing, amazing to talk to you. Don't forget, if you do want to go somewhere in 2022, but you don't want to deal with the planning of it, come with me. I'm going to Poland. I'm going to Georgia. I'm going to Slovenia. We all have huge, we 110%, as Rachel would say, comply with COVID protocols. We keep everyone safe. We always make sure on a case by case basis that the country is safe to go into. You don't have to plan a thing. Just show up. I've already done it for you. And I have so many amazing people going this year. Just come with us. It's already happening. Be a part of it. Um, let's see. Anything else? Any other last minute questions? Yay. More luggage for Tammy. <laughs> Tammy, the luggage collector. Uh, am I going to Eurovision? I've never wanted to go to Eurovision more than this year because of monoskin in Italy. But I don't think I'm going to make it because I might try to scoot over to um, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia before my Poland tour starts. We'll see. We'll see. Um, all right, everyone. I love you. I'm so excited that you are here today. If you're watching in the replay, um, please make sure if you want me to send you the notes from today, the list to kind of help you navigate COVID, put the word notes in the comments. If you were watching from my personal page or YouTube, I can't see the comments. So next time, come over to the business page and watch it with us over there. Um, once again, I'm Juliana Dever, experiential travel expert. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and just spread joy wherever you travel, okay? I will see you next Thursday at noon. We're going to have another topic, and I haven't decided yet, um, but it'll be fun. <laughs> Maybe it'll be the craziest thing I've ever done while traveling. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone.